In this lesson, we're going to focus on proven parallel lines. So let's say if we have two lines. Let's call this line A and line B. And these two lines are cut by a transversal line, which we'll call T for transversal. And let's say this is angle 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Now the first thing you need to know is that if angles 3 and 6 are congruent, so let's write that, if angle 3 and 6 are congruent, then the two lines are parallel. So A is parallel to B. Now angles 3 and 6, they're known as alternate interior angles. Notice that they are on alternate sides of the transversal. Angle 3 is on the left side of the transversal, and 6 is on the right side, so they're on alternate sides. Now, notice that 3 and 6 are in the interior of the two parallel lines, A and B. They are on the inside of those lines. They're in between them. So therefore, 3 and 6 are alternate interior angles. And so, if the alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines must be parallel. So you can write it this way. The converse of alternate interior angles, if they're congruent, then the two lines are parallel. Now this symbol means that line A and line B are parallel. So this is the symbol for parallel lines, and that's the symbol for perpendicular lines. Now the next thing we need to talk about are alternate exterior angles. So angle 1 and angle 8 are alternate exterior angles. If these two angles are congruent, then line A is parallel to line B. So you can write it this way. If the alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines will be parallel. So this is the converse of the alternate exterior angle theorem. So let's focus on 1 and 8. They're alternate angles because they're on opposite sides of the transversal. 1 is on the left, 8 is on the right. And notice that they're outside of the two parallel lines. They're not on the inside. They're on the exterior of those parallel lines. Exterior means it's on the outside. Interior means it's on the inside. And so if you can prove that two angles are alternate exterior angles, and if they're congruent, then you know that the lines are parallel. The next term that you need to be familiar with is uh, corresponding angles. Angles 2 and 6 are corresponding angles. So if those two angles are congruent to each other, then line A will be parallel to line B. So you could describe it this way. So if the corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines will be parallel. And I forgot the word R, so you can add that there. Now there's one more term you need to be familiar with, and that's same side interior angles. So 4 and 6, they're on the same side of the transversal. That is, they are both on the right side of the transversal. And if these two angles are supplementary, so if angle 4 plus angle 6, if, it, if they add up to 180, meaning that they're supplementary, then the two lines, that is A and B, are parallel to each other. So that's something else that you want to keep in mind. So if you have alternate interior angles, such as uh, three and six or four and five, those are alternate interior angles. The two lines are parallel. If you have alternate exterior angles like one and eight or two and seven, then A is parallel to B. If you have corresponding angles such as two and six or 
1 and 5, that's corresponding. Or you could say 3 and 7 is corresponding. And 4 and 8, they're corresponding angles. Then the lines are parallel. Let's work on an example problem. So let's say if we have this picture. And let's say that this is A, B, C, and D. And in this problem, you're given the following information. So first, you're given that AB is congruent to DC. That's the first given. And also, you're given that AD is congruent to BC. So using that information, prove that line AB, or segment AB, if you want to use that, is parallel to DC. So go ahead and try this problem. Feel free to pause the video if you want to work on it. So let's make a two column proof. Statements and reasons. So what's the first statement that we can make? It's always good to start with a given. So we know that AB is congruent to DC. And so that statement is given to us. And let's mark it on the figure. So this is AB and it's congruent to DC. Now in step two, we know that AD is congruent to BC. And that is also given to us. So that's number one, number two. And this is AD. It's congruent to BC. Now, what's our next step? Where do we go from here? Now, let's look ahead. Our goal is to prove that AB is parallel to DC. And in order to do so, we need to prove that these two are congruent to each other. Those are alternate interior angles. So if you look, DC and AB, if we're trying to prove that those lines are parallel, then we can see that DB is the transversal, which makes these two angles alternate interior angles. And those angles will be congruent if these two triangles, triangle ADB and triangle uh, CBD, if we could prove that they're congruent, then we could prove that those two angles are congruent and therefore the two lines. So that's a mental outline of what we need to accomplish in this problem. So in order to prove that the two triangles are congruent, we need a third side, and that is DB. DB is the common side between both triangles. So we can say that DB is congruent to itself based on the reflexive property. Now let's move on to number four. So now we can make the statement that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CDB. Now what's our next step? Now let's make sure we put a reason for this. The reason is side, side, side. It's the SSS postulate. And we've used statements 1, 2, and 3 to prove that. So now we could say that angle ABD, that's uh, this angle, is congruent to angle CDB, which is uh, that angle. And the reason for that, CPCTC. Now we can make our final statement. That is AB is parallel to DC. And because these two angles are congruent, they are alternate interior angles. And if the alternate interior angles are congruent, then we know that the lines are parallel. So we can write this statement. So whenever the alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines, the two lines are parallel. Or we could say uh, the converse of the alternate interior angle theorem. So that's one way in which you can prove 
two lines are parallel in a typical two-column proof. Thanks for watching.